Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. In this video, we're gonna talk about users on Madcap Central, because when you first sign up for Central, when you first purchase it, you only have one user on there, that's the person who signed up, but you wanna get other people on board. And so that's what this video is about. We're gonna go through the steps and all the things you need to know about inviting new users. And also we're gonna talk a little bit about permissions because a lot of the people that you're gonna be inviting are gonna be authors and these people need to be set up with permissions. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Let's go. Now, before we even get started in Central and start working through all of this, there are a few things that you really should know and maybe set up before you do that. Uh, one thing that you need to do is ask yourself, how many people am I going to be inviting onto my central license? Is it just going to be one person, a handful of people, uh, dozens, hundreds, thousands? What, what is it? Because the answer to that affects how you're going to go through this invitation process in central. So if you're just going to be inviting one person or a few people at a time, it's really what you want to do is just go through the wizard uh, each time for those separate people. Just invite them manually one at a time. But if you're going to be inviting a mass of people, well, there is something that you can do to speed the process up. And that is to get into Microsoft, Microsoft Excel and create a, uh, a file that has everybody's email and names that you're going to be inviting. So if you're going to be inviting, you know, 400 people, that's probably a better way if you can get access to those emails and those names. So let me actually show you in Excel what I'm talking about. So here is an example of uh, an Excel spreadsheet where we have this set up. And I don't have that many people in here. Normally, if, if I'm inviting only this many people, I'm, I'll probably just go through the wizard in Central one at a time for each of these. But let's pretend that this is just filled with way more people than this. Now you can see the format's really easy. The first column is email, second column, first name, and it's spelled like this with no space, first name, and then last name, that's it. And then you do the file, save as, and you save it as a CSV file somewhere on your computer. And then when you go through the wizard, you're just going to point to that. And that's going to send out invitations to all these people. Now, also in the wizard, there's a link where you can download a template that already has it formatted like this. But as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, just these columns spelled that way. And so if you already have a spreadsheet that has this type of information in it, you can just use that. Just make sure the columns are right. The other thing to point out about this is that you don't want to have more than a thousand uh, rows, a thousand people that you're inviting per CSV file. Uh, so if you're going to be inviting, say, 4,800 people, split that up into five different CSV files. Um, otherwise, you're going to you know, hit a snag when you try to go through this process. So that's the first thing I wanted to cover is if you're going to be inviting tons of people, set this up ahead of time. Then when you go through the wizard, you're just going to be able to select. Hey, I just want to interrupt this video for just a moment because uh, there have been some new developments since I first recorded this video. And there is another alternative. Uh, if you want to invite lots and lots of of viewers, of new users. Um, and that it has to do with what's called single sign-on or SSO. And that lets you uh, use your company's identity provider. You'd work with your IT department to set this up. And so people actually wouldn't create their passwords in, in Central. They would just use their company credentials, the credentials that are on that identity provider. And that's how they would log in. And another benefit to that is if you have private output, like you can see, I have a site here that's private output, and I want to get a whole bunch of people onto my license uh, really easily. I can just send them the uh, link to that private output and they click on that and they'll log in through SSO and they'll just be onboarded immediately. Um, as viewer users onto the license. And so that way you don't even have to create a CSV file. And that might be the way that you wanna go if you already have all these users set up 
on your identity provider. The IT person has that on their, um, ha has all those people in there. That could be a really nice, easy way to go. So if you're interested in that, uh, there's a couple of movies. One is on a uh, single sign-on, check that out. And the other is on, uh, on private outputs, check that out also. And maybe that's how you wanna bring people on. And again, that brings people on by default as viewer users. Well, I'm gonna talk uh, a little bit in, in a little bit in this video on uh, the different viewer types. So there's viewers and there's authors and subject matter experts. So I bring everybody in as viewers, but then you could change their, their type also if you wanted to change people to authors or subject matter experts. Anyway, just wanted to let you know there is another way to bring in a whole bunch of users uh, without going through the wizard, without using a CSV file. And it'll just do all these invites for you. Another question that you should ask yourself when you're doing this is what, who are the people that you're going to be inviting? Because Central has three different types of users that you can invite. One of them is author. And so you don't, that doesn't necessarily mean that the person has to be a flair author. It really, because you might have a manager say, who doesn't even work in flair, but you want them to be up on central, to be looking at things and be involved. So what this means, the author user type, it just means that these people will be logging into Madcap Central and they're gonna be able to see everything. So there are lots of pages in Central, lots, lots, of, uh, lots of nooks and crannies. And anybody who has the author user type is going to see all of that. Now, the other thing about the author type, though, is you set up permissions for them. And so even though they can see all the, you know, at, at, the, at the front of it, they can see all of the the options, all of the pages, there's only some things that they can go in and do. Uh, they're going to be limited in some ways. Some authors maybe can do everything, and some authors you're going to limit them to only do some things. So I would ask myself, do I have users who are going to be that type, the author type, and what permissions? Maybe you want to think ahead about what kinds of permissions you want to grant them. So here's what I would do. So in your browser, here's Madcap Central, and I would just open up the help for Central, and then go in and search for permissions. And you're gonna see this stuff come up and just click on this setting up, setting user permissions. So this is the topic that talks about this and all these permissions you, you're gonna be seeing in there. And this breaks it down. This lets you know what all of these things are. Now, a lot of these permissions, they're, they're self-explanatory. You, you kind of get what, what they're about, but there might be others where you're not exactly sure. So you can just look at this, understand what the permissions are about so that when you go through the wizard to invite people, you know, yes, I want them to have this permission. No, I don't want them to have that permission. So author is the first user type. Now, another user type is a subject matter expert or a SME. And these are people who are just going to be part of Central for the sole purpose of reviewing files, topics, and snippets that authors send to them. And so it's really cool because these subject matter experts can go on to Central and they can, if they're all, uh, if you've got multiple SMEs, they can all be editing, reviewing the same file at the same time. So that's really cool. But because subject matter experts don't need to see anything else in Flare, they're not going to see anything else in Flare. They're just going to see the reviews page. So that's another type of user that you can select. Uh, a third, the third type of user that you might invite is a viewer. And it's just as it sounds, these are people that are meant to view your output. But you could have output that's just out there for the public. Uh, anybody in the world could go and see it. And so in that case, you don't need to invite people, especially for that. Well, when we talk about um, inviting viewers, these are people who are special in that you might have some private live output. So it's output that you've, you've generated and you've published your hosting up there on Central. And um, you want people to see that, but they have to log in. They have to have a username and a password because you don't want everybody in the world to see this. Uh, for example, I use it 
at Madcap Software internally um, for documentation as it's being developed. And I want people inside of Madcap software to be able to see this, but they have to go in and they have to log in. I don't want the whole world to see this stuff yet because it's still under construction. Okay, so uh, viewer is the other type. Now, there are a couple of considerations with the viewer user type. With authors and subject matter experts, you buy the seats and you have a certain number and you can always buy more if you need them. With viewers, it's unlimited. You can invite as, whoever you want, as many people as you want. Those are free, but there are a couple of things that you need to do. Number one is the way that private live uh, sites work, that, that kind of output where you have to log in, the way it works is they're tied to teams in Central. So you have to set up team, and then the teams have to be connected to the site that you set up in Central that, that is your live private site. So the live private site is connected to the team. The teams are connected to the users. And so as long as the users are connected to that team, then they have access to that. So let me go into Flare and just show you a little bit. Or sorry, let me go into Central. I get them mixed up. Let me go into Central and show you a little bit. So in Central, over on the left, select Teams. And you can see I've got several set up in here. Now Teams, it's just a way to organize users together. And you might just create Teams like I have here. I've got some projects that I've uploaded called Module 1, Module 2, Module 3. Um, and I've created Teams because maybe there are certain authors that are working on those Teams um, that, that are working on that project. And I just kind of want to keep them together, organize it that way, or maybe I've got a management team and different users for that. But then I also have teams set up that are the, the, their whole purpose is to be connected to live private output. And so within these teams, I've got all the users. And as long as those users are on that team and I connect that team to the site, then they have access to it. So this is the team. It's just, there is really easy to create these and actually have movies, a movie on, uh, on teams. And so you can watch that for more information. Then over here on the left, there's sites. And so sites, this is just the output. This is, this is the collection of information about the output. So I've got some, uh, I've got several outputs here, online help, and there's PDF. And so it's, what are the, what are the characteristics? What are the, you know, the, the what's the information about this uh, site that makes it unique? What's the URL for it? Um, is it live or is it not live yet? And you can see that there is this column here that says private, and there are a couple of check marks. These are private sites. So these other sites that don't have that, they're not. They're just public. Anybody can go onto them. But something like this one right here, I'll open it. You can see this is the name of the site. It, and uh, you can put in the vanity and you say, what project, what build is it supposed to bring up? And then you say, you select set live and set private. Okay, so it's a live private site. You have to have a username and password to log in. And then on the team I'm cutting in on this video, because since the time that I first recorded this, uh, the UI has changed. There used to be a teens tab up at the top, but now it's you're going to find it over on the side. So uh, just continuing with what I was talking about, you select the teams uh, option over here on the left. I don't have any teams associated with this site, so you just uh, yet. So you just click edit. All right, and it brings up this list of all the teams. And so from here, I can select whatever teams I want to be associated with. That this is uh, the one that I want in this case. And so I'm just going to click save. All right, and so this team is associated with this site. So as long as the new users are associated with that team, now they're associated with this site. Again, there we have uh, videos about sites also. So you can check those out if you want to, if you don't really have that um, straight in your head yet, what about sites, you can watch those videos and understand more about sites. But these are things that you want to set up 
ahead of time before you get into this wizard to invite people so that you understand, oh yeah, these are the, these are my viewers and I want them to I want them to be on this team because this team is connected to this site. So that's the preliminary stuff I just wanted to uh, make you aware of. Now we're going to move into central and we're going to actually go through this wizard and invite some different types of users. Okie dokie. So now that we have all that preliminary stuff out of the way, we can just go right in and invite some. We're going to go in and invite each of the different types of users and you'll see it just goes really fast. Okay, so in Flare, want to come over on the left to users. So the users page, that's where every, all of your users are listed. And we've got three in here right now, but we want to add more. So up at the top also, it lets you know what you've got, what you have available and, and how many you've used. So you just come up here and click add new user. And also on the first page of the wizard, it also gives you that same information. So there are no surprises. Now let's start out by inviting an author. And uh, the thing is authors and subject matter experts, most of the time you're you're probably not going to be inviting tons and tons of them. You could if you have a really gigantic documentation team or just, you know, so many SMEs. Uh, maybe, maybe you do, but probably most of the time you're going to be adding them one at a time. So let's add, let's click down at the bottom, add one user. And up at the top, we'll select add user seat and we'll choose author. And these tabs, you're just going to kind of move through these as you click next. And these are going to be different depending on the user type that you select. So author, that's what's really nice about this is just guides you through what you really need. So let's click in here and let's add uh, George. Let's add George Costanza. He's not doing anything these days. I can learn how to spell. Uh, yeah. All right. So put in their name and their email address. Click next. Now you come to these permissions I was talking about. You can see there's all kinds in here. So the stuff on the left is real administrative stuff. And then things that have to do with projects and specifically with builds. And you could select one of the main things to select everything or deselect it. Uh, just click whatever you want. Uh, if you want somebody to be a, a user administrator, you this bottom one is is that's the thing. You're going to see when we go back to the users page, there are people who have crowns on their avatars, and you think, oh, I want I want a crown. How can I get a crown? You be you you're a user administrator, and there are all these other administrative type of uh, permissions in here. So I'm going to deselect that. And go ahead and click next. And now it brings up teams. It looks at, okay, these are the teams you've already got created. And so you just answer what, what teams do we want this author to be on, if any. Uh, you don't have to select anything. The ones with the icons let you know these are teams that are associated with these live private sites so that they could go in and log in to view that output. And uh, let's, just, let's just select this one. We could select any, but we're just going to select one right there. Select next, and that's it. And it gives you a summary. And now we're moving from three out of 30 seats to four out of 30. And then you just click invite. And this will run through and send the invitation. And it'll let you know when it's done. And then what's going to happen is this: uh, the user is going to get an email. And the, and the user goes in and clicks the link in there. I'll show you here in a second, but it's really what it's doing is it's uh, looking at all the information that you gave it, what team is this person gonna be associated with and blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, this should just finish up here in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and click close. And it finished and I know it finished because this refresh button has this red dot up here now. So I don't see that person in here and I can click refresh and there he is, George Costanza, he's an author. Now let's go and look at the email that George would get. Okay, so when you invite people, new people to your license, they're gonna get an email that looks something like this and they just click this link 
And that opens up this window where they create their username and password. Hey, so I'm interrupting this video once again, because as I mentioned earlier in this video, when I cut in, that uh, you now have the ability to use a single sign-on on your license. And if you happen to do that, when people get invited, yes, they can set up their own central password They, if you aren't using single sign-on. But if you're using single sign-on, then at that point, they would just choose to use single sign-on and they're gonna use their company credentials, uh, whatever set up on your identity provider to log in. So there's multiple ways to go about doing this. Well, again, if you're interested in that, check out the movie on single sign-on. And that's it. And then they're in. So it's actually very simple from that perspective. Now, back in here, until this person does that, creates a username and password, it's going to say invited. And then once they finish that up, then they're going to change to an active status. All right, let's go through the process again. This time, let's invite a subject matter expert. So we go past the first screen again, subject matter experts like authors, most of the time might just be adding one person at a time. So we'll click that and come in here, subject matter expert. Now there's fewer things in here. There's not as much you need to complete for this person. Let's, uh, let's invite Dwight Schrute. All right, put in the email address, we're done, click next. Again, same thing, you can associate this person with a team. Now, the teams that I have set up on here, these two are, again, are intended for these live private sites. That's what the team, the people belonging to that team, that's the main thing that's gonna happen. These others are probably mostly useful for people using the, who have the author type. Um, so, a subject matter expert, it's you're probably most likely you're going to also associate them with a private site. Um, I'm going to leave this deselected for now to show you that you don't have to select anything if you don't want to. Maybe you just want these people to review your topics and that's it. That's all you want. So you click next. There's my summary. Now I'm using one out of 10 seats instead of zero out of 10. So I have nine available and I click send invite. And again, this is gonna run through and I'm just gonna go ahead and click close while it finishes. Okay, so I went ahead and refreshed the page and there's Dwight and you can see the C type. This is a subject matter expert. Again, invited, hasn't completed the thing. So one more time, let's go in and this time let's invite uh, some viewers. All right, I open up the wizard and this time because we uh, want to invite a whole bunch of viewers. We're gonna tap into that CSV file I showed you before. And so let's select add many users. So now the first thing that you do after that is you select, okay, what type of person, what type of user? We're gonna select viewers. And now you get this screen. And this is where you go choose that CSV file. And again, I also mentioned before that if you don't have uh, an Excel spreadsheet started yet, you can click this button to download the template. It's already formatted for you. And then you just provide the emails and the names. I'm gonna go ahead and click this, select your file. And this opens up uh, this window. And I want to, I have already have this one right here, viewers CSV that I created. I'm gonna select that and it's gonna load it in here, there it is. And this gives you a little bit of information down here, it tells you what's gonna happen based on what you have in that CSV file. And you can see it's telling me, hey, you're gonna get five new users. And I click that, it expands it, and I can see who those people are, what their email addresses are. And it also lets me know if something's wrong. It says, hey, you got a couple of invalid email addresses in here. And so these people aren't gonna be added. You go, well, who are they? Well, it's Homer Simpson and SpongeBob SquarePants because didn't really complete the email address completely. It's missing the .com. And so those people aren't gonna be added, only five are. So in the real world, what I probably would do is I would go back to my, my CSV file, I would correct these, and then I would start over the, with the wizard and go reselect it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it this way. I'm gonna click next. Now, because we're inviting viewers and the viewers, their real purpose here is to view output. So 
um, putting them on these teams that don't have the links isn't going to do any good. You, you have to select uh, in this red text lets you know you have to select at least one team, but the team, it's not going to really do them any good unless they're associated with a live private site. Let's say I want to so, um, associate this team with both of these, um, all these you, all these viewers that I'm inviting through that CSV file. I want them to be associated with both of these teams, and these teams are associated each one with a live private site. So then I click next. Now the next thing that happens it's, is that it's asking me to select the onboarding site. And what this really is, is it's the default onboarding site. Each one of those uh, teams is associated with a site with certain output. And so because I selected two of them, here they are. These are the ones that they're associated with. And I just need to select one of these as the default. And then, the reason why you want to, you need to select one of them is because unlike authors and subject matter experts, when these people get that email and they click the link and they set up their username and password, they're not going to then be logged in to central like authors and subject matter experts are. The viewers will never go into, into central. They're just going to look at output. And because they're going to, they're going to fill out their username and their password and then finish it's going to open up output and we need to know, okay, which output you got to choose one of them. And so that's what that field was all about. So, and then we click next and now we're here, we're using five of unlimited seats. So viewers, you can add as many people for free as you want. We're, we just got five of them and we click send invites one more time. This is going to run through. We don't have to wait for it. We can just click close. And so we'll just wait for it to finish. And there it already did. Uh, we got the red, dot and we click refresh it actually finished um one one of the persons in here and this will you know come up again when it gets the rest see the red dot came up again and i refresh okay now i got a, a lot more in here i've got and there it is again so you're going to be able to refresh and see these people as they get loaded in here and all of them are invited all these people in here are viewers one, two, three, four. So it looks like we got maybe one more. There's the last one right in there. Okay, so now we got everybody, everybody that we invited. And so the wizard's actually really fast, really cool. And now we got them loaded. So the next thing we're gonna do is check out this user's page a little bit. We've gone through and we've invited lots of different users. So now let's go back to that user's page and check it out a little bit. All right, a few things I wanna point out about the user's page. Uh, first of all, notice that some of these users have the crown right there. So they have that user administration permission. That's why they got it. And some have avatars and some haven't, these people haven't even accepted yet. And they haven't, completed their profiles. They'll complete their profiles. You can select an avatar, all that good stuff. Also note that there's uh, only a certain number of people on here right now only have, there's only 10 users and you can see down at the bottom of the page, maybe you're gonna get hundreds or even thousands of people on here and you can select how many you wanna see per page. And if you get lots of pages in here, well, in order to quickly find a particular person, you can use a filter up here, maybe search on their name or search by seat type, whatever. You can use those filters. Another thing to point out is you can see the kinds of information across the top here. Uh, that's because I'm, I'm only showing this, this particular information. If you click this gear icon, you can see I'm leaving some stuff out. I'm not showing their email, uh, last date they signed in and out, their phone numbers. You can select or deselect whatever you want to show on the user's page. All right, as I mentioned before, the status shows whether someone's invited or uh, active, but you can also click on someone who's active and select choose to deactivate that person. That would actually free up a user seat if that person just isn't active on the license anymore. Another thing that you can do, notice the check boxes over here on the left. You can select those and then these options at the top become enabled. So you can perform an action on one or more people depending on who you select over here. Uh, so you can change their status uh, right here by clicking this button. You could uh, change what type of users they are. If you have somebody who's a SME and you decide, no, they need to be an author, you could change there. You could uh, associate these people 
with teams quickly by selecting that one, or you could delete them if you don't uh, want the users on the license anymore. So that's just a quick tour of the users page. And now there's just one final thing that I want to mention to you before we close out this video. One of the things we talked about in this video is setting permissions for authors. And there's one other aspect that I wanna talk about when it comes to permissions, because it's not just when you're inviting someone that you set permissions, you can change their permissions after the fact. So on the users page, I can select the avatar of an author and it brings up this dialogue. And because I've got a uh, user administration permission, I can go change permissions for authors. I'm gonna select permissions option here and you can see here they are here are all the permissions that you saw when we went through the wizard but there's an additional field now there's this field at the top and it says global permissions and if you select it these are all the flare projects that are in on the license so what this means is all of these settings when you see this at the top global permissions that means all of these permissions are true for all of these projects in here across the board. And that's great, but maybe you've got a particular project where you want someone to not have permission, where they do have it in other places. For example, maybe module number one, I don't want this person to have push permissions. Okay, so what you can do first of all, is you deselect this, with global set, and I'm gonna save. I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna come back into it, select permissions. All right, so now it's deselected there. And if I went to another, you know, other topics, you're gonna to see it's deselected. If I go to module one, it's deselected, but then I could, I could uh, select it for module one. So if I, I, I kind of said it backwards before, if I want this person to have push permission for module one, but none of the others, this is what I would do. First, you have to deselect from the, with the global setting, and then you come back in to the ones where you want it set and you select it. And then I'll just save and close out. Okay, so now I've just changed permissions. That was just one real quick thing I wanted to show you um, because it also pertains to users and permissions. Okay, and that is it for this video. So now you know, you got all these preliminary things that you can do, and then you just go through the wizard, whoever you want to invite, however many people you want to invite, select that CSV file if it's a whole bunch, and you can go back in later and deal with the users page, all those things and change users permissions for authors. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will talk to you next time.